welcome back to The Coda Shelf and you're joining me on a cold autumnal evening in Brussels. And yes, we are a few weeks before the solstice and yes, I already have decoration up because that's what I do. And um, over the next few weeks, I know that I'm going to get really, really annoyed and start tweaking it and perfecting it and <coughs> probably adding a lot more. But without further ado, I would like to go into the, um, the topic for this week this midweek pop-up, which is basically a new deck that arrived yesterday. And yes, I decided to get the Next World Tarot. This is the large edition, and this is the second print. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about that, my first impressions. It only arrived yesterday, and um, how I think hopefully I'll be able to use it in a project next year. So that's why I got it, and I thought, why not give it a try? Now, I know this is a fan favorite with like several tarot tubers. I know Katie Flowers loves it. I know. Money from Ways of Your Soul loves it too. I think that's two people already that it's kind of like always in their top 10. And um, and originally when I saw this um, deck, I have to be honest with you, I just, it didn't resonate. It was like, oh, I don't think so. But the more I saw it and the more I listened to people talk about their experience with it, I realized that whilst as myself, just as me, it may not be really my kind of like genre, my kind of approach to tarot, but I think it's good for me sometimes to work with decks or to try decks or use them in projects because they push me out of my comfort zone and make me see tarot and the whole approach to tarot in a new way. And I think that's the reason why I bought this basically. So I really do appreciate those who love this deck because you have helped open my eyes already, which is a good thing. So yeah, so this is the second edition. Now, this is by the, the artist is Christy C. Road, if I'm correct. And um, yeah, Christy C. Road, it says on there. And um, and as I recall, the, the, the first edition of this doesn't look like this. This is like a new matte black box, which is gorgeous, by the way. Um, but the first edition actually has one of the cards on its cover. I'm not sure if it's the world card or something else. But it has the first, it has one of its cards, tarot cards on its cover. And I honestly have to say that I bought this, the second edition, um, because I'd heard that the card quality wasn't so great for the first one, blah, blah, blah. But when I bought this, because this is a first impressions video, and I clicked on it to get it from Book Depository, basically. And by the way, this is mass market, and it retails around 40, right now it's, what, 40, 42 euros, 45 euros, something like this. Um, which I think works out around 46, 47 US dollars, which personally I think for a mass market deck is pricey. So there are two versions of this, this large one, and then there is a pocket version, which I think is of course um, at, a, at a lower price. But I bought the large one because this deck, which, which I'm gonna get to in a moment, but as many of you might know, has a lot of detail in it. And I, I, wanted, I wanted the cards actually as they are. I, I'm actually look, looking to do a project with this next year. And so I actually needed the cards basically in full detail. I, I didn't want to get a, a magnifying glass and, and I'm going to use this less in the tarot traditional sense, if that makes sense. So that's why. So anyway, um, yeah, the first edition, as I understand, the box had like an image of one of the cards on the front and I honestly have to say, I kind of like was like, mm, I I I think I would prefer that. And the reason why I say it, and and again, maybe I'm completely wrong, but this is like a cover which I'm now seeing with a lot of tarot decks. Like maybe it's a fashion trend or something. Like this black silky look, and then you've got the cold edging and stuff like that. And I just feel like like it's becoming like this like. Like everyone's doing it kind of thing and so I don't know I thought that the original was pretty cool but look this is beautiful this is gorgeous and I think it will look beautiful on my shelf so I'm not complaining in that sense no way and of course this design is absolutely gorgeous with the thorns just stunning so anyway um now as I recall um, the guidebook says that the artist began producing this in 2017 and she, you know and it was done from I think very kind of like humble beginnings by the sounds of it kind of thing but they did have real life people um posing for the actual images which i think is amazing so yeah i think this was the original cover of the card um of the box one of the cards and this is i think this image is amazing now 
I have to say the other thing that when I saw this deck in other people's reviews, the first thing it reminds me of is, um, sounds going to sound strange, but maybe it's the same in the US or North America overall, but, um, or where are you, you're living, but here in Europe, when, when we move to like a different part, like a different city or a different country or something, there's like community courses basically. <laughs> and, um, but you might go and learn a language or learn to bake and meet new people, that kind of thing. And um, I'm one of those people that loves that, that kind of stuff, by the way, because, you know, when we move cities, it can be pretty lonely and like, you know, and there's only so many parties when I was young I could go to. So I like things like that, which allow me to meet people, but like are beyond just like, you know, people going out and getting drunk kind of thing. So <laughs> anyway, um, the, the images kind of like slightly reminded of like magazines that you might get from there like you know learn how to speak a new language kind of thing um and that sounds probably very corny but that's what it reminded me of and actually i didn't mind it because it reminds me of like everyday life it reminds me of people everyday people basically um maybe that's what the artist was trying to get at right because that when i read the guidebook as well so here's the guidebook which has been apparently extended the the um the artist does say, you know, that this this is to represent everyday people. I think what I hear in the in the language is it's representing the underdog, you know, those people who um, are underrepresented, um, are um, uh, are marginalised, are um, just basically people who we we might think, you know, oh, they don't belong in society. Well, they do belong in society, basically. And I think it's really really fresh to have that approach. Um, you know, it, it kind of like reminds me of anarchy, but I, I personally don't see it as anarchy. I personally see it as just like society speaking up. Maybe I'm just being weird here, but I just see it as society speaking up and, um, and I don't get so phased by these kind of things, I think, these days, because it, I guess when this, this deck was already begun or it's in its journey, I think today we've just so seen so many people speak up and it's just becoming more and more normal for people to... If, if they have a voice to, to turn around and say, look, I'm not okay with this. So um, I, I just see this deck as part of like a normal normality actually these days. But anyway, um, these are the backs, um, which are absolutely beautiful as well. I, I love that barbed wire. I originally thought it was thorn, but it's actually barbed wire. And um, and they're not shuffled because again, I'm, I'm gonna be using them for a certain purpose. So I, I decided not to shuffle them. But the cards are, by the way, humongous <laughs> um, and extremely well detailed. Now, one thing that I picked up, and this is, this is like a bugbear of mine, so, is that they have here the, um, the astrology sign, the element, and the planet. And they don't quite correspond in the way that I have learned or have been learning as well. There's, there's some variations. So for those of you who might be new thinking, oh, this is the way I'm going to learn all the planets, uh, it might be a way, but I, it might be kind of like a certain perspective, but I would not take it. For example, you know, the magician, um, Virgo actually rules Mercury, but also rules Gemini. And although um, it's exalted in Virgo, um, the, the Gemini part of the magician is also extremely relevant to the magician card. So because it hasn't mentioned Gemini, I'm a bit kind of like, hmm, should have had it. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, that's the one thing that I think that I kind of like was a little bit annoyed about. So I wouldn't take this, the, the whole correspondences as, how would I put it, gospel, let's put it this way. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a learning tool. Um, the actual illustrations themselves are just so beautiful and real i mean yeah it's meant to be real but they're real i love it's not just the 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 body shapes the features the fact that we have different um phenotypes not just colors of skin but you know different ethnicities and so forth it's not just that it's the shading on the body it's the fact that we're seeing the person fully you know i love that i love the fact that they don't look like they've just been plonked onto a card or something i don't know how else to put it but the art is just gorgeous um, these cards are known for having a huge amount of detail in them and the detail definitely does tell a story. Um, I know, I know uh, Maureen was asking, you know, is it worth getting the big one? I was just like, and I said, oh, let me do a first impressions. And I really think that the, 
the large cards are worth their value personally i do they i do think that because the detail is just so beautiful and and i'd miss that now there's the other thing which is like you know this card is labeled the teacher it's number four and traditionally that's for me the emperor and i don't see the emperor as a teacher i see the emperor as a leader and there's a distinction i i strongly feel there's a distinction but there's a guidebook and and i'm going to delve into the guidebook and and i'm going to you know for me i've got to have an open mind allow the author allow the creator allow the illustrators to um to tell their story right instead of me imposing my story on it which is what i like to do basically so um you know i i, I bought this deck because it is already pushing me out of my comfort zone and i needed that I, again, it's not as if the images are not relevant or real to today's world. They are actually very real to today's world. That's not what's pushing me out of my comfort zone. What it is is the approach of the of the artist, which is really grabbing my attention right now. Um, yeah, so this card I've heard many people speak about, um, many reviewers, and I loved it too. Um, I really welcome the fact that the that she's fully naked um, because we see we see fully i hate to put it so but we see fully naked bodies and they're always kind of like in this mold of this model kind of thing and i'm like no this is a model and this is the model that we're using and i like the fact that it's variation in body types again um and also by the way um you know i've i've got like personal experiences where i i know these situations like you know it touches everyone we know these situations where we've gone through certain procedures and so forth it's it's very uh, uncomfortable it can be so kind of like this this it's not just physical nakedness but it's this emotional nakedness and and i when i saw this card it really just brought back some things that i've also had to deal with in life myself or with family as well so you know it really has been a a, a wonderful initial impression uh, i very rarely do this because I, I i i very rarely do this but when i bought this this deck and i opened it I actually went through each card one by one which I don't normally do like I I kind of like these days I realize I've got to make sure that all the cards are there everybody's like you've got to make sure the cards are there normally I wouldn't even do that but to slow down and to go through each card piece by piece because I was just absolutely blown away by the detail in them and the expressions on their faces and the sh and like I said the shadow of the light used and yeah they just they feel like real life human beings these feel like friends you know basically friends i can have and friends i have had and that is a that's really cool now some of them are very poignant some of them um you know this there's a moment we have to take a step back but yeah i i can imagine myself actually in these scenes um, maybe not all of them i don't i don't i'm not sure about that one but you know i i can imagine myself in these scenes i also know people who could be imagined in these scenes kind of thing and and i think that's the that's the fun of it right um yeah i i think this deck whilst maybe it's not for everyone i do think my initial impression is is that it's giving a voice to many people who perhaps didn't feel that they had a voice um god it sounds so cliche but like yeah it just it it, it kind of like People who traditionally would not have been put on a tarot deck is finally like, yeah, we get we get our chance. We we get to be here too, and um, and I really like it for that. I really like also that everything is not clean and spick and span and and you know look at that canine there. You know, like just they don't look like Pat. You know, just uh, I think that's a pit bull. I think that's a pit bull. It looks like a, it looks like a mix between a pit bull and terrier. I don't know. Somebody else tell me, but I just. I just love that. Now, I know it's good to sometimes, I, I'm one of those people that whenever anybody's doing kind of like one of these talks and whatever, and walking through the cards, I'm like, show me the minor arcana because I'm always scared that the minor arcana is just gonna be a load of pips thrown on. And, um, and if there's a tip, you know, I need to do one of those videos again of like what I look for when I, when I buy a deck. But I always have a couple of minor arcana cards that I love. And the reason is, is that when I'm walking, do, looking at a walkthrough, I don't forget to look for those. And because I look for them, I also try to make sure, is this a pit deck or not, you know? And, and if it's a pit deck, it's fine, but I want to know that before I buy it. You know, it's, it's kind of like, don't, don't fool me kind of thing. So anyway, 
here's some of the minor arcana now that we're coming up to gorgeous gorgeous ace um there we are the two of wands again you know the 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 protagonist is just amazing in each of these cards i loved this card i remember when i was looking through this deck i was sitting there and I was just reading all the titles of the book at the back and everything so um if you're someone that likes this deck and 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 you're thinking is it worth getting the well i've, I've seen it thinking am i going to get the pocket or the large one i personally i'm really glad that i've begun with the large one because now if I really, really wanted to, I can invest in the pocket, but the large one gives me the detail that I'm looking for basically. Um, okay, so this is just a first impressions video, so I won't dribble on too much. I mean, you know, I haven't worked with them or anything. Cardstock, that's another thing. Cardstock's not great. Now I've heard that about the first deck, but in this deck, I wasn't impressed. And I'll tell you why, because when I got it, the tops weren't even properly cut. Like, I actually had the bit of somebody else's deck's card bottom attached to mine, I think, or something like that. And I remember I just quickly, like, peeled it off, kind of like, it, it was e very easy to remove. It just, you know, in the factory, it hadn't cut through perfectly. So I was sitting there thinking, somebody somewhere has a little bit of a border missing of their card because it's on mine. <laughs> Random. Um... But yeah, so I wasn't impressed with that. And I have to say, when I bought the deck, I mean, this is the very last card. And already here, um, this is manufacturing defaults for sure. This is not because it's been in somebody else's hands. This is manufacturing. Um, a bit of the card had been raised up. And I could tell it was probably because, again, it hadn't been cut through properly. For me, that's not good. The price tag right now, I think I bought it with a 10% discount. So it's, I think it's around 44 euros, what, 46, 47 dollars. For that kind of price, no, this cardstock has to be improved. So that is the thing. Now, because I bought this again, I keep saying for, I bought it for a project, I can allow it because I'm gonna use it in a very specific way, it's okay. Like, I'm not gonna have a complete meltdown. And also, I honestly think if I bought another one and I complained and I said I want another deck or whatever, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be similar to what I'm gonna get right now. So it's like, okay, let's just roll with it. But that's the one thing, you know, that um, the, the card stock is not there. I've, I've bought a few um, Oracle decks which have this kind of card stock. And, um, and I think for a tarot deck, it needs some, it, you know, it, yeah. So the, the, um, the, the publishing company, I don't know if the publishing company had changed um, when the author originally... Um, has so so sorry the fool is is actually what was i think not the fool there was another card so this is the fool i don't think i went through the fool properly sorry so that was right at the beginning um but the publishing company is and i had their name and it's i think it's no it's gone out of my mind where are they right oh there they are silver sprocket i was gonna say sprocket Silver Sprocket is a publishing company. So, and I know, I think Chris, Christy Road decided to have them republished. I, again, I don't know what the first batch was like, the first of, of this, of the large deck. So, um, so yeah, that's one of my mm -mm, negatives on this one. Um, but if you can get past that, which for me, right this moment, it's fine. I, I'm okay with it. I'm really loving it. What I'd like to do as a bit of an experiment is actually um, put this side by side by another deck that I don't have, but I've been toying with getting for about three months. So if I've been toying with getting it like since not three months, beginning of September, end of August, I had thought about getting that deck. Is that September, October, November? Yeah, we're coming up to three months since I've been wanting that another deck that's in my mind so you can see that like I really do try and mull over otherwise honestly it's going to be like money just like raking out and then sitting here which I don't want which is why I take so long but look at that knight of wands I mean it's feminine fire starter like yeah I like the keywords on this one in that sense and um and I just love the imagery I think it's just been done so well um Look at this Queen of Wands as well. It's like it says the throne of the de determination. Wow. Um, yeah, I just I don't know what else to say. It's it's just a deck that's just been done so well. Let me try and speed up on the rest of the 
minor arcana so at least you get a feel for some of the pentacles here i'm showing you the wands some of the pentacles and oh and can we get on to the next ones which is oh that's still pentacles we're still in pentacles come on come on, come on. oh look at that king of oh god see this this is for me the sign that it's a great deck when i when i'm when i'm like mesmerized by it Okay, here we have the swords. Look at those. Again, just... This is a deck which I've got to be careful, otherwise I'll just be kind of like drawn into it constantly all the time. So I am actually really... Like, just doing this walkthrough with you and just talking about it is already making me think, hmm, this is a good buy. Here's the cups. Oh, they're so gentle. <gasps> so gentle. So beautiful. Oh, I... <gasps> Look at that, look at that joy. And just, yeah, he's having fun. He's at a party. Oh, oh I love these. I love these cards. Yeah, that, that, there you go. Loss. I was going to say sorrow and it says loss. Six of cups. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, yeah, just, you know, we can all identify with that, right? With our grandparents. You just having fun you know it reminds me of when i used to see my granddad and um we would be eating like raisins and nuts you know sitting outside on the balcony in india yeah it just reminds me a little bit of um spending time with him um so yeah so uh yeah a glutton i actually this is this this is called happiness when i originally saw this i thought more appropriately this is gluttony that's what i think um so i'm not sure if i agree with all the keywords but yeah, um, what can I say? It's, it's stunning imagery. Um, I have bought it for a purpose, like I keep saying. So it's not something that I would normally use. I mean, if somebody says to me, you know, I'd love a reading or something. I'm, I'm not sure if this is the deck I personally would use. Um, strangely, one of the things, um, one of the things that um, Christy Rowe writes about in her guidebook is, she mentioned something like, and let me just check it again. She's mentioned something like, let me just check it. Now, each of each of the cards, including the minor arcana, have a couple of paragraphs, which is great. Um, but where is it saying? Uh, All individuals illustrated in the next world represent co conspirators heroes inspirations and family living both on earth and in the spirit world the next world tarot is an oracle for revolution as we learn to redefine revolution as the choices we make in our everyday lives okay she calls it an oracle which is interesting um you know it's a tarot deck but she calls it an oracle and i i have slightly that vibe from it as well i see it more as slightly towards leading towards an oracle now somebody's gonna know somebody's gonna go no it's a tarot deck and and i've read with it as a tarot deck okay i believe you but <laughs> i'm just seeing i feel it's, it's slightly leaning a bit more towards the oracle side not because of just the size of the cards but because of the depth of the way they've been drawn um and something about those keywords and so forth yeah i'm feeling it leans a bit more that way actually for me i would happily use this deck i think with another tarot deck or with an oracle deck um, the cards, like I said, are huge, and um, I think they need upping in terms of quality. But um, yeah, so far, really great first impressions. I'm really glad I got this deck in my um, arsenal. The one thing I want to do is make sure that I use it, and um, I'm a stickler now for that. If I'm not using something, I have started to notice, mm. you know, so it's good for me to discern in that sense because. When I don't use something, it just really shows me again that like I need to be careful about what I bring in and just that that allocation of energy and resources towards it and somebody else can enjoy it instead, right? So um, I've already got a pile of decks actually that when I'm kind of like if somebody says they're interested in tarot, at least I might be able to give them a starter pack or something and I think that would be nice to be able to at least say like maybe they're not their first choice or something but to donate a few decks to people who want to start the journey basically and and um and give them that opportunity but this is just a lovely lovely deck um and yeah if you're on the fence about it i do think it's worth it um 
yeah, and I don't have anything much more to say about this, but thank you for joining me for this midweek pop-up. Um, maybe you have some thoughts about this deck. Maybe you've tried it, it's not for you. Maybe you've, you've tried it and you love it. Um, and you're like on your second copy already because you've worn out the first one. I don't know. Um, maybe you've got the pocket and the large version. Um, so let me know. And, uh, and I'll see you all on Saturday because I'm doing my review, my monthly review on Saturday. So thank you all for joining me and wishing you a wonderful week. Bye now.